What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Talk of the Tundra, your Packers podcast as part of the Blue Wire family and the Eurostep Podcast Network. Joyfully, as always, I am your host, Numac, and joining me every week as he does, and for this pseudo-emergency pod, we'll call it, is uh, my lovely co-host, Jordan Tresky. Jordan, how are you fucking doing, buddy? We're going explicit today. I don't care. I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Nothing else happened that bumped me out uh, about 10 minutes ago. So we're we're talking about uh, the Packers here. We are talking about the only positive thing that happened in Wisconsin today. <laughs> yeah. Good Lord. So we have all of the good energy coming our way. And that is because the Green Bay Packers absolutely, without a freaking doubt, fleeced the New York Jets in the trade for Aaron Rodgers. Adam Schefter, as of... 3.17 p.m. April 24th, 2023. Trade compensation per sources. The Jets get Aaron Rodgers, pick 15, and a 2023 fifth-round pick this year. That's pick number 170. And the Packers get pick 13, so essentially a first-round pick swap. Uh, a 2023 second-round pick, number 42, and a sixth-round pick, number 207. And then a conditional 2024 second-round pick that becomes a first if Rodgers plays 65% of the plays in New York this season. That is an absurd amount of value. And I'm going to take this very fucking second to yell at anybody who said the Packers didn't have leverage in this trade. Absolutely ridiculous. I was called, uh, just I, I was saying, people were saying I was smoking something, saying they could get two firsts and a second for Rodgers, which is what this trade will be if Rodgers is healthy this year. There's no way he doesn't play 65% of the snaps if he's healthy. Just absolutely insane. Insanity. So I'm taking this, I'm victory lapping this, this whole fucking podcast that Brian Gutekunst did what he was supposed to and didn't take two thirds or only a third next year or a second and a fourth next year to get Rodgers this trade off. And it, when it all comes down to it, he got what he, he got probably the maximum value he could have out of this trade sands like an extra player but that was even like a sweetener that was really out there in the initial part of the trade so i got my little spiel off i'm excited jordan what, I, what was your reaction when you saw this uh this afternoon uh my reaction was oh they traded Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> <laughs> that was my reaction to today's news um Ian Rappaport, I uh, believe, was the first to uh, report that talks had been re-engaged. I think that was yesterday. Um, that was Sunday afternoon, yes. And, uh, you know, it's draft week. That kind of sets like a pseudo deadline. Mm-hmm. And, you know, with valuable assets from both sides um, being available for both consumption and stuff like that, it's going to kind of re-engage talks. It also just kind of, I, I believe this is, been talked about um, after the fact now that the dust is starting to settle. It kind of shows that they weren't all that far off to begin with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know I mean, as much as like it's this big thing, like the standoff and everything like that. It's like really like we think that these two teams are playing tug of war of like draft picks, and that kind of is the case. But it doesn't. Nothing is ever broken like in a very like violent death like a bucks first round series or something like that (laughs) um you know so um so yeah i that's so for obviously first reaction was oh they traded him second was well what do they get and you know i i know there's a lot of chat in our discord over the last couple weeks and months just my camera um, about is Aaron Rodgers going to be worth a first rounder? Because you see players like Jalen Ramsey. Um, who else? Uh, Darren Waller, I believe, got for a third round. Yeah. Jalen Ramsey is a fifth rounder. Who was another like big trade that um, didn't? Near- Stephon Gilmore, that's yeah. not near the level. Um, those players are not generational quarterbacks <laughs> that is the ultimate difference here and as we are about to go into the jets did not make a secret that air rogers is going to be coming to new york oh man by any means necessary so 
given all that, I, I don't think anybody, I think the Packers are surely set up better for the future. Mm-hmm. That is their end goal here in this trade. I think the Jets ultimately got what they wanted. They got Aaron Rodgers. They got a quarterback that for at least one season, um, maybe it may take them to the promised land. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. But, but um, yeah, Aaron Rodgers is worth a fucking first rounder. Yeah, it, at least. At, at least, least, as it shows. Like, <laughs> they call this, the, this contract an albatross with just how poorly and how much guaranteed money it has and how much it is for the next couple of years, right? But the point being is that you get a generational quarterback, and Rodgers made it clear he wasn't going to play another snap in a Green Bay Packers uniform, and said so on the Pat McAfee show, which ultimately kind of made this go on longer than it should have, but also ultimately kind of raised the price, like the price of the, of the brick went up, essentially. And it was... Uh, a, a really good surprise to see looking at my phone driving home from Minnesota, which is why <laughs> like, like, I thought it couldn't have happened at a, at a worse time for your boy, new Mac, everybody. But with all that being said, I was a very excited man flying down on 94, trying to get here. As soon as I, could. <laughs> um, I think Alec Breer put it the, the best talking about how like the jets, made it known that they were trading for Rodgers and they were, they were talking all off season that Rodgers is going to be a jet. Um, he says in his uh, sports illustrated article, they basically summoned the car that would have been worthless had they not had an engine. And that was, a, it's a great analogy. They uh, brought on Nathaniel Hackett to run their offense, to be the offensive coordinator, signed Alan Lazard, and then just made a bunch of, I guess, win now moves and trading for that Raven safety, trading away Elijah Moore for a pick and just all these moving parts to get Rodgers to come here. And the and it's crazy because the biggest part was Rodgers' deal being so big that it was rumored that Woody Allen um, wasn't... Not Woody Allen, Woody Johnson. I don't know why I said Woody Allen. <laughs> Woody Johnson. Let's just go broom fast and like we're going on I-94. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> was nervous about taking on Rodgers' money with him possibly retiring next year because he was 90-10, going to retire coming out of the darkness. And according to uh, Paul Brettel, some notes on the trade, Rodgers' cap pick goes from $31 million in, uh, to $40 million this year. That's just dead cap. And then uh, Pelissaro said Rodgers will rework the deal before he trade, before the trade is finalized to help the Packers, which is, again, great. He doesn't have to do that, but he can, and he, he's going to. So thank you, Rogers, for that one. Packers don't need any of his guaranteed salary, and with this, with the trade being done prior to June, June first, he's off the books by next March. So a year from now, the Packers' uh, salary cap sheet will be clear of Aaron Rodgers and his massive deal, and we'll have a pretty clean looking sheet. For do we do we go ahead? I'm sorry. Nope. Do we want to go over the full terms of the deal just in case? Of, I mean, I'm sure people have seen it, but just just to give context of what we're talking about here. Sure. Go go ahead. Jets obviously receive Aaron Rodgers. Uh, the Packers 15th or first round pick, which is 15th overall. And a 2023 fifth round pick, number seven or 170th. Packers get number 13 of this year's draft, number 42 of this year's draft. Uh, number two hundred seven. Do we do we go through this? We did. I'll we let through. you go through it. But we went through. Why am I? I I'm <laughs> losing my my memories. I'm old. I'm old. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's all right. Um, but yeah, what I was go- gonna continue to say is that since Rodgers' entire deal will be off the books by next year, makes a lot of cap room for a, a possible extension for Jordan Love. Like obviously, Jordan Love's contract wouldn't be. Um, on the books in 2024's sheet because they'll pick up his fifth year in like two or three weeks, and then he'll be he'll have that contract for next year. But then that extension will come into play in 2025. So we're doing pretty good. We're pretty good. Pretty good. Doing pretty good. They're uh, they're Packers fans, hot listeners, all that good stuff. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. It it, it the, it's just done. I'm so, I'm so happy it's finalized and it's finalized pre-draft. Like this would have been so much fun, like draft night, to have this sort of reaction in this sort of hall. But I'm just I'm just happy it's done. <laughs> yeah, that that is ultimately like I know we're gonna 
drool over the picks and everything like that. Not to throw cold water on this, but that doesn't mean that every pick that the Packers got from the Jets is going to pan out because that's just impossible. Mm-hmm. Um, ultimately, I appreciate the clarity that we have at this point. Not that it wasn't going to go anywhere any other way. Jordan Love was going to be the starting quarterback for your Green Bay Packers in 2023. But it just, even when I saw the Ian Rappaport tweet on Sunday afternoon, I was like, ah, here we go. We're going to have another like couple days of just like little whispers. And yeah, you know I mean, you're going into the draft of like, I think it'll finally get this deal done. And then it was to see it kind of just work as basically 24 hours. Um, I just am very appreciative of the fact that they they uh, got over their differences very quickly. Um, yeah. And it would have been interesting just to see, like, what other iterations of this deal, like, where did where was it stuck? I know we've heard about having some protection of whether Rodgers was going to play next year. Mm-hmm. The fact that they it included that provision of this year is kind of puzzling to me. I don't know. It, that's really odd. It, that's really odd, right? It's really odd. And the fact that it's not even that, like, if he plays this year, it's an amount of snaps and that next year's done. Yeah. Next year has nothing to do with it. Rodgers could retire next year and he'd be, Packers would be like, done. Just like wipe their hands clean. So it, they, I think the, the that's where the, the leverage part comes in. And I keep getting giddy that we're you and I and the rest of like Packers nation are proven right in this scenario because it was just such a bullshit argument from Jets fans and a lot of media members and a whole bunch of other people saying that the Packers had no leverage. Like, no, the Albert Breer put it perfectly. I'm going to keep saying it. They built the car with no fucking engine and they, they, they needed a quarterback because Zach Wilson was not going to be no. the engine of that Lamborghini. <laughs> and it's just like, I know we, we looked at, Russell Wilson, Matthew Stafford, these pl- these tr- recent trades right. of teams offloading significant draft picks um, for not really rentals, but aging veteran quarterbacks that they're not built for rebuilding teams. They're built for teams that are ready to take the next leap. The Jets are in that category. And a lot of there was a lot of concern like, well, they missed their window. The, the, the year to trade Rodgers – was last year when he's coming off his back-to-back MVP season and you go into the offseason and two days in and you trade Devontae and everything like that. <sighs> Again, these are quarterbacks. These are not – you can't find them dime a dozen. Nope. Can't find a good one dime a dozen. You sure can't. And this is going to – the Packers are not going to be the last thing this happens to. This is going to happen more and more often as teams kind of start to really – take significant uh, gambles for, you know, wanting to upgrade their quarterback position because it will happen again. Right. It absolutely will. And I'm just like, I'm rubbing my hands together, audio listeners, at just the the excitement of the Packers picks that they got. Like, they picked before New England, or not New England, um, well, technically New England, but they picked before the Jets in the first round, right? But then they also got 42 instead of 43 that... uh the Jets had because like the Jets had 42 and 43 they had 42 from the Browns and so not only they get to pick ahead of the Jets once but they get to pick ahead of the Jets twice which is like not the biggest deal it's whatever but like if I'm Joe Douglas and I'm trying to trade for Aaron Rodgers I want like the better of the picks that I'm trading right like we have they have 42 and 43 I'd much rather trade 43 than 42. It's one spot up. Like, what if the Packers take something or some player that the Jets want? That that's You just traded away the player that you wanted, right? That you're really high on. So it's just like, oh, it, oh, listeners, my heart is warm. My face is happy. I'm smiling ear to ear. It's just, it, and all this has come, it's Tuesday or Monday, 9.33. And in what? We got we to gotta get the, the countdown uh, from, uh, from Tankathon going. Two days, 21 hours, and 25 minutes and some change. Packers get to start picking these picks. And I saw like a an idea earlier that maybe the Packers use two of those, like use those two second rounders to move up in the draft, like move um, 
back into the back end of the first. I don't think I'm the biggest fan of that. We can talk about draft later, unless you have more stuff on um, the rest of us. Can know I do, but we'll talk. I guess we'll talk about draft later. So yeah, that that is where I'm at. Is like okay, there's a lot more to process of like the trade itself that will soon be figured out. I mean, mm-hmm. what days? Um, for what it is worth, Takeathon does their. Uh, draft power rankings and it uh to explain their little thing this calculation assigns a value to every pick of the draft it ranks teams based on the sum of their pick values values for each pick are based off the ch- of a chart set by the harvard sports analyst analysis collective uh the packers as of right now after the trade stand eighth um, in those draft power rankings, number one is the Houston Texans. Number two is Seattle, which you know they're sitting pretty. Crazy. Number three, Detroit. Number four, Raiders. Five, Bears. Six, Cardinals. Seven, Colts. Eight, Packers. Not that it matters. This is a Cardinals podcast, but I could see the Cardinals rocketing up this list come Thursday night because I think they're trading three. Like it'd be ridiculous not to trade three. There has been talk of them, right? Yeah, they should. Like that's the better place to trade three get more picks but since they have so many holes and we're a bad team this last year but they can trot out a bad team in those awful jerseys they released with all that being said we'll, we'll talk about <laughs> the new cardinals color wave jerseys that are not good um yeah eight's pretty good for a team that just missed the playoffs and has a really good chance to um set up jordan love for success as best they can because like that's the biggest thing right is just making sure they kick off the jordan love era the right way and give him as many tools as they can to ensure that he succeeds in his role, which is the most important part of all of this. Yeah. I mean, this is it. They already were posting photos of him at the OTAs, and it was very much a man looking forward to his opportunity Mm -hmm. and ready to lead his team. We'll finally have Jordan Love kind of be the, I mean, kind of, he is the face of the Green Bay Packers. And Absolutely. it's not even just the love effect. Like, this is for Gudekunst and the Fleur to a, I would say, a certain extent, if probably smaller, but for more, more so for Brian Gudekunst, he weaved a very complicated and tricky web of trying to sustain a competitive era and close out the final few years of Aaron Rodgers' tenure with the Green Bay Packers as best as he could have. And yeah, that didn't result in trips to the Super Bowl, um, which is unfortunate. It did happen that Rodgers responded with some of the best seasons of his career. Mm -hmm. He won two MVPs. It's about as great as we could have expected it, even if there were some things along the way that, um, you know, Jordan, your video limit. There we go. There we go. Um, there were some things along the way that uh, soured the end of the Rogers era, but um, yeah, I I don't know. I applaud him for kind of when you when he finally had to get to this um, point of starting to retool. I'm not going to say rebuild. Mm-hmm. He did it as well as he could have. And he largely stayed out of the limelight. He let these things happen as they happened and profited off it. Yeah, absolutely. Like, it's without a doubt the, I guess, I'm not going to say the best thing that could have cut, like, the best trade he could have got, but it's pretty high up there, right? Like, I think best is an absurd amount of draft picks that aren't isn't even feasible and is practically a pipe dream. But he really kind of cemented his legacy and legitimacy as a general manager, right? Like, this is... was going to come to define him as a general manager if he screwed it up. If he screwed it up. But he didn't. And it just really cemented himself as, you know, the Packers general manager for years to come. I think this deal, regardless of how the pieces turn out, just is, like, perfect. Like, Jordan Love could be bad. Like, that he could be bad. That's a possibility given the timeline that we're on here. I don't think he would ever lose his job over the Jordan Love pick right now because of this trade. And that just is like 
with all the deals on the margins he's had with Razul Douglas and Devondre Campbell and just bringing in great picks over the last few years, I think he's set for at least another five years, frankly. That's the thing. I mean, yeah, he does have longevity and how he can uh, control this era or hold this era and build a new, you know, competitive team out of this. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, it's very, I don't know, he's got as long of a leech as he wants it. And if he can still, uh, you know, bring competitive or eventually build this into a contender, then, you know, Goody Cooks is going to be as tenured of a GM as we've seen in Ted Thompson, Ron Wolf. Right. Leaders of past. <laughs> um, Yeah, I think like just looking at the, I think you, you had said you looked through the, did you, I guess, did you watch the Gooden Kunz presser or did you just read through the, the article that the Packers posted? I saw some comments because it was happening simultaneously as this was being Breaking. broken. Right. Um, so I was very just like caught off guard that he was talking at the same time right. as this was happening, which is kind of nuts about it. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, it was, he was doing his pre or annual pre draft conference. Right. Uh, um, and this is kind of a recap, but kind of not, but just talking about how things got uh, basically reported and that mm-hmm. even though things aren't finalized, things are pointing to towards Packers trading Aaron Rodgers to the Jets. Right. Um, Guru said, we were expecting you to be done very quickly, hopefully soon. A lot of things have been agreed upon, so things still to go through. There's been a lot of conversation that's helped us get to this point. Again, there's still things that need to be done. It's not finalized, but we do expect we do expect it to be done here in the next couple of days. Right. Um, what did he say? I think the the um, one part that I saw is that like the, it's a it's a second bullet in the Packers article. It's written by um, oh I hate pronouncing his name Wes Codquits. Yes, uh, yeah, the yeah. Packers senior writer, senior beat writer. Um, Quote, once we get squared away, that'll be nice for them because we actually kind of know what we have. Because we'll actually kind of know what we have for this particular draft, getting into it at least until we start moving around a little bit. Moving forward with the compensation for this year's draft was important to us. Like, clearly, they we talked about this all offseason, that getting pieces for this offseason, for the first year of Jordan Love, was critical. I'm glad to see he recognized that and was probably listening, right? He, he was taking some advice from us. Not... <laughs> <laughs> not to not to be maybe a little bit yeah whatever that whatever the word is <laughs> I don't care but yeah it's I'm just glad to see that that's the, that's the thinking right that does that the organization recognizes that they need to capitalize on this two year span not I guess yeah. not capitalize but make the most of it to understand where they're at oh well, I mean this is again this is you're building a new era this is yep. what Ted Thompson did when they moved on from Favre to Rogers and mm-hmm. think of all the players that they selected within that. You know, I guess one to two year window when he was a starter. Right. You know, you can look at like I would have to go through the drafts, but like this is again, this is how you build out the team. This is how you build out. They're gonna have twelve picks in this draft. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's a lot. A yeah, lot. and they're not all gonna hit, but getting no. as many as you can, you're kind of arming yourself to really find who's gonna stick on top of the nucleus that you have. Um, it certainly helps to have three in the first 45. Like, 12 picks is a lot of picks. Right? But a lot of those are, like, late sixth, seventh round picks, which, say what you will, isn't the the best, but it's still a pick, right? Yeah. We've had we've had seventh round draft picks um, turn up before, but they're still, like, in the seventh round, they have four picks. So, like, that's, like, how, how much you're going to do with those picks is TBH or T, uh, TBD. So, yeah. I think it, it's just, we'll see. But three in the first 45 is, like, the ideal fit. And, and I guess, do you want to get, get into, like, the draft part of this and, like, what it yeah, sets yeah. them up to? Okay. I, I, I'm just going to throw this in because it's not about this year's draft in, in yeah. particular. If that pick turns into a first rounder next year, oh boy, yeah, oh boy, oh boy. Anyway, they're good. So, um, moving up to thirteen, 
obviously good. I'm very, very nervous that that we're going to see Jackson Smith and Jigba get taken the pick before us. That's make me very sad as a Packers fan. A very, very sad Packers fan. Um, Who's that 12 again? Why am I forgetting? Houston. Who, like, desperately needs wide receivers. They need offense. <laughs> yeah, they, they need everything. <laughs> Any, anything. So, but they have a lot of picks, too. They have some of the highest stuff, like one of the highest grades that you had talked about. But, yeah, 13. The mock drafts are doing their mock draft thing as it comes towards uh, draft week. Peter Skronsky, Skronsky, now picked seven. Not at, not not in the teens anymore. Yep, like at least according to Tankathon. But at this point, I'm just ready for the draft because it's not going to go because it's not going to yeah. go any which way we see. Like right, it's yeah. all speculative. But um, currently, it's on Tankathon. Uh, Broderick Jones is where um, they have uh, the Packers taking, so a hundred tackle, but. Like the second round having those two picks and or three yeah, two picks and three picks essentially. Or yeah, forty two and forty five is really good. They can address offense super heavy in the first two of those three picks if they really choose to. And then supplement that defense with a really great pick, whether it be um the fellow from Northwestern whose name I'm not gonna butcher our live again. Um <laughs> Kansas State Ed Rusher, Felix Anaduke Uzama however you want to do it. They have Tankathon has Packers picking Darnell Washington. Let's go at 42. And then uh, BJ Ojulari from LSU at uh, um, at the edge. So, yeah, it, we're set up to be put up pretty good. Very so. Very much so. Um, There was... Guru Coach actually talked about the the... Uh, it's not really probably revelatory, mm-hmm. but he did talk about what this class is con- like considered deep in, and we've obviously gotten through it with our draft pods and everything like that, especially at defense where you have a lot of edge rushers, you have a lot of interior linemen. Um, Guku said, I think there's a lot of there's a lot of deeper class of edge players than there have been in other years, and mm-hmm. tight end is another one I mentioned earlier as well. I think it's a good draft overall. Certainly, it's one we're very excited about. One that we really believe we're going to be able to add to our football team and help us win in 2023 and beyond. I agree. Strong agree, Brian. <laughs> also, are you ready for one other thing that he... This, this will conclude the Brian Gunkun's quotes. Okay. Era. <laughs> um, he talks about quarterback. Yep, and... Yep. He talked about he would like to have a third arm when the team begins the throwing portion of their offseason program. We only have two on the roster, so whether it's this week or somewhere down the road, we're going to have to add some. I'd like to have three at least before we get to any of the throwing stuff. We're not there yet. Certainly, we're going to add that to that room whether we end up with three, go to camp with three, or whether we have four, we'll kind of see. There's some guys in this draft we're very high on. They happen to be at the right spots. As you know, I won't hesitate. But we'll kind of see how that shakes out. Yeah, I feel like that's appropriate. I think they'll probably draft some one of the, one of the quarterbacks in like the later rounds, just mm-hmm. be, just because like the uh, the quarterback pool as it as it is right now is not good. Carson Wentz, Matt, Matt Ryan, Teddy Bridgewater, Mason Rudolph, Joe Flacco, Chase Daniel, Trevor Simeon, Brandon Allen, Josh Johnson, uh, Brett Ripien, John Wolford, and Bryce Perkins, like bunch of high names up there that suck like Matt Ryan who I, who I said in a previous pod, podcast that I'd be comfortable br- like bringing him in as like a veteran sort of calming hand to Jordan Love yeah. sort of teach him the ropes kind of thing former MVP um, don't think that'd be a bad idea but I think they most likely just draft one I think if they don't draft one they might sign one of these quarterbacks that we see here obviously because that's the only way they can do it then but um, I would guess prefer them to Sign like Matt Ryan overdraft one. I'm not really opposed to either option because like it doesn't really matter too much. But um, Danny Etling is kind of like your young, developed quarterback. Should you need to develop a quarterback, right? And then you can take Matt Ryan to go in to try and win you games if Jordan Love sustains like a minor injury or something in the interim. Yeah, I think having the veteran as opposed to two, I guess three really young and experienced guys would be best. So, Who was Rogers' backup when he first started? Was it Flynn? 
No, I think you talked about this. I think it was Brian Brown. Yeah, that's right. I'll double check his thing. But I I'm think almost... that's that would have been around that time that he they drafted him. Yeah. So I'll double check. I'll go to. They drafted him uh, in the second round of the 2008 draft. Uh... That could also be uh, very similar. Yeah, Brian Brown, Matt Flynn, and Aaron Rodgers were the car- quarterbacks in that there final roster. There you go. So, yeah, it's definitely not like a uh, finalized thing, but worth uh, worth noting because what Matt Flynn had was a rookie that year. So, yeah, they went in with a rookie backup as opposed to uh, a uh, veteran. So, But that's also a different era of Packers football. You're muted. Ain't no problem. True, but Gukus was there. Yes, he was. As opposed to what Roger said when he started, that he wasn't, they didn't even shut him out as the people that were there when he was drafted. Yeah. No, he was definitely there, Mr. Rogers. Like, he was, he was there. So, um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else we want to touch on. This is right, we're about a half hour, but I'm just like looking through some stuff. I don't think there's too much. I'm just happy it's done. For, first and foremost. Like, yes. Yeah. Just thrilled to have this saga essentially end because we get to ha- have something new to talk about, per se. And I think before I get into this little mini monologue, I should, we should all, we should both back up and say, forever appreciative. We've already said it, but forever appreciative of Rogers' time in Green Bay. There's. I went down the monologue of many episodes ago about how Favre and Rogers really helped to sustain and make Green Bay a good economy for the people that live there and help feed just the fandom that thrives in Green Bay. Rogers is a big part of that. He's part of the three decades worth of pro football, just Hall of Fame level caliber football being played at Lambeau. And he put butts in seats. He brought fans from all over the globe to um, to Green Bay to walk through those doors and see some hallowed ground. That being said, I'm just so excited to get into this new era to start actually um, looking at football a different way than looking at it through the on a, a lens of the Rodgers era, right? I've been watching Rodgers play football for the Packers for the last 14, 15 years, and it's you kind of just like know his mannerisms, right? You know how he rolls out. You know sort of his decision-making. You've seen all the great plays he does. It's not that it's not shocking every time. It's just that at in year 15 of him starting, you kind of know what you're getting, right? It's like a movie you've seen time and time and time again. There's nothing special. Not that it's not special. There's nothing shiny and new about seeing Rodgers play most nights, which isn't, which isn't a bad thing. You kind of know what you're going to get, and it's going to be a Hall of Fame-level quarterback. But I think it's just exciting to see Jordan Love get his chance. And there's going to be bumps along the way, without a doubt. Like, And that's part of like their growing pains. Like, Rodgers had bumps along the way, too. But it's just good from a podcaster fan experience. We get to analyze a whole new player that is going to be at the forefront of this franchise for the next two years. Will it be fun? It might be. It should be. Will it be maybe unfun sometimes? It probably will be. It should be. But... All in all, we get to see a true Matt LaFleur run offense with a quarterback that's bought into this offense. And I think we get to see what could be the best version of a Matt LaFleur coached offense for at least two years, um, if we're lucky. Yeah, I mean, part of this, too, is like and it, it's going to not be hunky-dory every week of like, Things are changing. Expectations are far different with this Packers team mm-hmm. than we have seen even this year. Our expectations of the Packers over the course of this year, our first year with Tot, uh, certainly soured. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> going into the year, we're thinking like this is a Super Bowl contender, Super Bowl contender. When you don't realize that potential, when you don't even make it to the Super Bowl, much less win it all at the end. It's highly disappointing when you have someone like Aaron Rodgers on your roster. You're given 
this cachet of like this is an automatic contender no matter what everything like that and as much as that like you can't ever take that for granted and the fact that they the packers have been able to s- sustain success for three decades mm-hmm. across two quarterbacks that is not something every team in the nfl or all sports can do right um I don't know. I just, I like that little freedom of like, these guys are going to take the lumps. They're not going to be world beaters by any means, but it gives us another, look how exciting it was when Rodgers really put it all together. Yep. Um, That that 09 through 2014 was a magical time. Oh, of course. Yeah. And then, you know, like we're so far removed. We're talking about that's almost 10 years ago. The the yeah. Seattle game is almost ten years ago. I know that's when, like, for me, I view that as a very. It's hard not to. It's a very stark point of. Oh like, yeah, it's a it's a like a, a it's a breaking point in in like Packers history. It's like it's yeah. a, a watershed moment. Yep, and I don't know. I'm just kind of I'm looking forward to going back to the drawing board and seeing how this Packers team learns how to play in the NFL and win mm-hmm. and. Does that mean it might be a seven to nine season or worse? It could, but having someone at the helm and getting again, I'm just excited to see what Jordan Love can do because right, only he knows how much he has wanted to get to this point, and he has been the ultimate professional. He has not made any missteps, but he, he has not even garnered himself. He's not even stepped in any controversy. The only worthwhile comments that were made were lifted from an, a piece, a great piece by Jason Wildey talking about how he would have felt if he came, went into next year or this coming year as a backup. Right. And it's like, yeah, the, the guy just the, wants to play. Is that the athletic piece where he's talking about like, yeah, yeah. I think those, I think my man, Matt or, Schumann, Schumann, who wrote that. Yeah. Something like that. I th- I th- I'm pretty sure it's athletic, but I'm, I'm not going to don't quote me on that. You might be right as well. But yeah, strong agree. That's the only thing that you can like even point at as like Jordan Love talking in the media. Like he's he just wants to play. He's a kid who was drafted in the first round. He want he wants to play, and you know he gets that that opportunity. Yeah, yeah. It's it's. I'm excited to see the young kids. Like this is a just as 2014 was like a big moment in Packers history. Also, right now is a big moment in Packers history. You have yeah. a very young core of Jordan Love, Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs. We'll throw Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon in there. And then on the defensive side, Jair, Kenny Clark, um, Quay. Quay, and hopefully Devondre the, Campbell. Devondre Campbell. Hopefully Devontae Wyatt. Fingers crossed that he makes that yeah. list this season. But like these are the guys now, right? There's like the old the old guard is gone. Mar Marseille's Lewis is gone. Randall Cobb is gone. The only guy left over is David Bakhtiari. Which good. I'm happy he's here because he's an all pro left tackle when he's healthy, and I hope that he finishes his contract with Green Bay, but he might get traded during the off during the this season at the before the deadline. He said it himself. So yeah. all in all, it's just this is this is not the Packers team from 2020, 2021. Like there's not going to be a whole lot of holdover. This is going to be a new look Packers team that I'm honestly just so excited to to get a whole new look at. Plus we got all the new guys coming in this this draft. Like we have three four top guys with their first round pick, their two seconds and their third. Like there's going to be four new guys to fall in love over to see how they can help the guys already coming in. So yeah, it's just a very exciting time now that this is done. Well, almost done. I, I, I'm very nervous. I should say very nervous. There's like that 1% chance it doesn't happen, which I don't think it happens at all because Rogers wants to go anyways. So like, duh. So, but once it happens, now we're in this new era um, with Jordan Love and Matt LaFleur and hopefully making back to uh, get back to the playoffs. And I think North's going to be a bloodbath, dude. Like, so AFC, AFC East. AFC East is going to be a bloodbath at a high level. And I've seen North is going to be a bloodbath at like the mid level. We're all yeah, going to be equally First trash. of 10 wins gets yeah. the, the crown. Yeah, I think the Vikings like should run away with it in light of the Lions news. Because like, the Lions losing all those players and also Jameson Williams is not good for them. I think it's going to do not great things for their, plus they lost Jamal Williams. He's side of the saints. Um, yeah. I just think that 
they had a really good opportunity to have a high flying offense with Jamison Williams out there, and now he's out for bad vibes to start. Yeah, six games. Yep. So we'll see, but I, yeah, I think the the Lions, the Packers, and the Bears are going to be all in that same like little almost five hundred give or take a couple games north or south of that. And then the Vikings should, if they keep up with how they've been playing the past couple of years, should absolutely. Um, that defense improves at all. Yeah, exactly. It, it, at all. At all. <laughs> Sadly, Zay Flowers is getting mocked to the um, Vikings at 23. So that'd be very bad for us. <laughs> I'd be so sad. <laughs> but that's for another time. Jordan, do you have anything else? No. I am, I am even more um, brimming with optimism on this draft week now. I think it's yeah. The fact that you we have a couple of days to kind of like chew on it now. It's like th- this is it's gonna be a big one. Gonna be a very big one. Very important draft. Very important draft. But with that being said, perfect segue into our promotions. Come join us live on the uh, Eurostep Podcast Network YouTube page. Jordan and I will be there uh, talking about the draft from when it begins. I think at seven o'clock is is the right time. Um, yeah, seven o'clock. Um, so we'll be live. Draft will be showing. We'll be just like talking about it. Just like yeah. if you're watching YouTube, we are now. Um, but it'll be fun to hang out, talk about each pick. We're going to try and get at least one guest on Mr. Mr. Andrew Snyder, but not confirmed yet and see who else wants to come hang out. It'll be very fun regardless. Um, so yeah, come hang out, go follow everything, uh, GSPN at gspn.info where you can find uh, subscriptions to, all of our shows, this, Talk of the Tundra, uh, Cruising for a Bruising, Win in Six, Eurostep, and Make Time for This. Um, go hit up the Bucks feed to give those boys some listens and wallow in their pity and sadness with them. That's what I was talking about the Bucks. You don't got to talk about them. They're going to win in seven. It's all good. Um, but yeah, come join us. And if you don't join us, we'll be potting right afterwards. So we'll have a podcast up um, Friday morning for you guys if you missed the live stream talking about who the Packers end up picking. Um with their first round pick. So, all right, folks, that is all from me. Signing off very happily is Numac, your host. And thank you, Jordan, for joining me on this lovely trade day. Thank you.